is the Big O Show. This is the Big O Show. All right, we are back. Damn, you got me by surprise here, bro. I'm here. I'm here. I'm here checking my texts and stuff. There he is, the man, the myth, the legend. Cam, you, uh, you, you, are you home or are you on the road? No, I'm still in Vegas here for Pro Bowl, so still on the road. Okay, all right, all right. That's kind of a funky uh, hotel room there. All right, nice job by you. you like four rooms there or something? Three bathrooms? Two no, bathrooms? yeah, that's the bathroom back here. This is like a separate room from the bedroom. My wife's joining me, so she's in the other room uh, sleep, so try not to wake her up. <laughs> okay, all right, so no yelling. Can I yell? You can yell. Okay. All right. All right. All right. All good. Uh, all right, Cam. So obviously, we're going to have this mess hovering over us for years to come because that's probably what's going to end up happening uh, with all of this. Walk us through with what you've heard so far uh, after all the responses from, from uh, the owner and Flo. Now everybody's responded. John Elway's responded. Where does the NFL go from here? Yeah, there's definitely going to be a lot of lawyers. Uh, this seems like a big legal situation more than anything. I'm, I mean, you guys have seen and I've reported some of it over the last three or four days. Two sides are really dug their, their heels in. You know, Ross and the Dolphins have now put their statement out, multiple statements denying it. Flores is sticking with his story, saying this is what it is. I have the evidence to back it up and it's going to go to. I think you mentioned it coming in. What what can be proved in court and what's see, what's determined enough to win a case? So I think these are serious things, serious allegations that the NFL is looking into. They're going to launch an investigation. I think there's already been a court date, initial court date set. Um, so that's really, really the, the starting point of the Steve Ross Dolphins part of the lawsuit. As we've talked about earlier this week, there's multiple layers. There's the Broncos side of it. There's a giant side. There's the NFL with the racial discrimination. But obviously the most eye popping thing that everybody's been jumping on is the Stephen Ross and the 100K uh, game. So I, I think that right now both sides have put out their strong denials. There doesn't seem to be anybody determined to settle at this point. So. Like you said, I think we're going to be in this thing for a while. When you hear that the NFL is going to investigate, what does that mean? I think I believe they're going to do a lot of looking into the evidence. They're going to talk to Flores' side and his team about what they have, what they're saying um, beyond just the lawsuit. You know, what what does the evidence look like? What do you? And then they're going to talk to probably the Dolphins and Stephen. Let me Ross. Let me, let me, let me stop you right there a second because I was thinking about this. Mm -hmm. Will they share evidence with the NFL because the NFL works for the owners? Right. And so I'm wondering, can the NFL proceed with their investigation? Because they have no power to, you know, as you know, they have no power of attorney. They have no power in anything to force witnesses to talk or anything like that because they're not the law. And they've had that issue in the past in other investigations. Why would Flores and his camp share any evidence that they have because then that would then possibly give the owners an edge because you're sharing evidence against the people you're taking to court well first of all i'm not a lawyer so i don't know all the legal parameters of this but i think there probably will be the nfl investigation but also if it rises high enough then maybe that's when the legal stuff comes in as well so i think it just depends on which one hits first if it's the nfl case then yeah you're right there has to be some conversation on what do we have to withhold to win our our, our legal case so right. um, ultimately the burden of proof from what i understand is on flores and his team to prove it so although you know they've made the allegations steve ross and his team and the broncos and the giants and the nfl they don't have to prove that they they didn't do it they just have to you know flores and his team have to prove that they did do it so the burden of proof is on him the evidence has to be on him and that's really the next step. So there may be some strategy. Maybe the lawyers and his team come out and say, hey, we withhold some stuff. And maybe that, that makes it a, a longer process. But eventually, if he wants to win the case, some you know people are going to have to uh, come out on his behalf and testify, whether in statements or in court. And uh, there has to be that proof come out. So that timeline probably depends on, <coughs> excuse me, which investigation comes first. But what I understand is, like I said, the burden on the proof is on Flores and his team. 
All right, let's move away from that. Let's get to some some of the football stuff. All right, so here's how I'm kind of reading this thing now. I've been saying for a couple weeks that Dable was one, Mike McDaniel was two. So now I keep looking at the landscape right now, and I'm, I was worried that with this whole mess, would it scare off McDaniel? Well, right now I'm not hearing McDaniel's name really tied to any other team. He is interviewing today already with the Miami Dolphins. I'm really liking, actually, the combination of the current defensive staff, something you reported first, that they were that the idea was to keep this current defensive staff. So I like the fact that Mike would not have to worry so much heavily about the defense. There's continuity in place right there, and he can then assess things down the line a year from now if he wants to tweak things. So I kind of like all of this. Are you hearing that there is anything that could deter this from happening, that this the mess that we have behind the scenes uh, could affect Mike McDaniel's position? But right now I'm not – it's almost sounding like, you know, this these two are going to walk down the aisle uh, pretty soon. So tell me what you're hearing with Mike McDaniel. Yeah, look, Bigo, I haven't heard anything that this legal situation is going to dissuade any candidates from – uh, coming here. Obviously, it lingers over the Dolphins and lingers over Steve Ross, but there's only one of 32 of these gigs. And a lot of times what's going on legally with the ownership um, really doesn't have anything to do with uh, with the head coach until it rises to a level where, hey, you know, we got to determine what's what's next with his owner. So uh, McDaniel's going to interview this afternoon. From what I understand, uh, Kellen Moore as it's been reported, will be Saturday. Yeah. And I know you're not a big Kellen Moore fan, but I, I believe that they'll he does nothing closing in on making a decision. So you I, got, I, you know, got I to admit, be, you got to yeah. admit, he has he has no swag, he has no sexiness, nothing. McDaniel has swag, has mm -hmm. some sexiness to it. You know what I'm saying? I, hey, look, I'm I'm the Jim Caldwell guy, so I'm not getting what I want, but. The Mc, I can I can lean with the McDaniel one. I kind of like the guy, the the Kellen Moore one. Oh my God, that's like a that's like having a cigar store mannequin on the sidelines coaching your team. Seriously, I mean, there's not much of a difference between a cigar store mannequin and Kellen Moore. Well, big thing for me is, and I've talked to you about this before. Like clearly, they decided to make an offensive hire. Yeah, and you know. I'm a big, you know, you hire the best coach rather than a side of the ball, but clearly they've chosen to take this path. Whether this guy, Mike McDaniel or Kellen Moore is a schemer or not, that's secondary to me. I want to know, can you lead teams? Can you have relationships with players? The collaborate words that the Dolphins were throwing out, all of the elements of being a CEO head coach are the things that I want to know. And I don't know enough about either candidate to say if either of them are that, but that would be the one question one concern i would have and uh yeah kellen moore i mean he's a guy who is is not too far from a playing uh his playing career so you can see a lot of these guys fast tracked which is another story you know we talked about brian floor some of his argument about the racial deals that maybe there's not as many black coaches who are fast tracked the way that kellen moore no doubt about that or, or <laughs> mike mcdaniel so um I, I think that mike mcdaniel actually spoke to uh someone someone yesterday about him and the, everything i hear about him is smart He's a great schemer. Um, he's a guy who was with actually with Kyle Shanahan the longest of all of his assistants. And um, I believe uh, Robert Sala, the Jets head coach, was asked about him yesterday um, down at the Senior Bowl. And he essentially said, I hope he's not in my division. So, you know, you, you, that's a guy who's coached with him on the staff. And uh, he thinks that he's going to be somebody who is a good, a good challenge to go against. So from what I understand, Mike McDaniel's the favorite here. And, um, you know, if I had to, you know, put money down on anything, it would be Mike McDaniel being the next Dolphins head coach within the next, you know, three or four days. I hope so, man. I hope so. How active do you think they'll be in free agency? I, I think I think they'll be fairly active. They have a bit good bit of money. Um, I think the number depends on what they do with a few contracts. I know you've been trying to get rid of uh, one big one, um, but I think I think that uh, they're, they're going to have like. They're going to have like 70, 75 million dollars at least in, in, in salary cap space. And they know they have holes. I'd look at the offensive line as the big thing in free agency for them to correct. Wouldn't surprise me if they went after multiple starters in that position group. So I don't know if you're going to have the splashy names, you know, like a receiver or, you know, some of the skill guys. But I think you'll see them really try to fortify those trenches 
um, with, you know, really solid veterans. They've gone the young route with a lot of the offensive line. We've talked about it. And maybe some of those guys can still develop. But I think they know they need veterans in that group um, to really get better on the offensive side of the ball. And, and they need a running back, too, whether that comes in the draft or free agency. So those are things I'd look at for this team. Uh, they'll get that running back this year. You can bet yeah. your ass on <laughs> it's, that. it's way overdue. Trust me. Yeah, yeah. No, that, that – uh, the New England dude is gone about, hey, no, we don't need to get a high pick and a running back. First three rounds, watch. They will have a running back. I, I'm, I'm, I'm hopeful, but I'll tell you I'll tell you this, Big O. Unless, the last they, two get, unless they can get like a Leonard Fournette or something in free agency. Because right. Tampa right. is going to – oh, dude, they're, they're going to be leaving Tampa – like I don't know, like people are leaving New York right now. You know, what I mean? <laughs> they're they're going to be scattering all over. I'm I'm personally hoping that the Dolphins go after Ryan Jensen, uh, the center that for be, Tampa. That'd be a really good sign. Physical dude, a little nasty. I like my offensive alignment a little nasty. Well, so, not only that, for Tua, you need to have a great middle of the line. Yeah. You have to give him a strong pocket so he can do his thing. And if you do that, I think you'll be fine. And it starts with Ryan Jensen. You get Ryan Jensen, I think Hunt becomes better. And then all of a sudden now, now you can start to work on that left guard, maybe Dieter challenges, or maybe you end up signing somebody else. Which, by the way, they also have uh, the, um, what is it, uh, Kappa, Alex Kappa, their guard, yeah. is, avail yeah. is available too with Tampa Bay. So. Yeah. You could, if, if you want, you can take two guys away from them and start Kappa and Jensen. Kappa at left tack, at left guard, Jensen at center, and Hunt at right guard. And dude, you are solid in right. that and pocket you, all of a sudden. And I know you, I know you mentioned that obviously there's a Patriot coach who's gone, but if you wanted to go and get a big right tackle, Trent Brown from New England's available. Right. Put right. him at right tackle. He's a big guy who you can, you right? Because I think Eichenberg has a future. I, I believe. Yeah. I, I still think some of these guys have a future. I just think you need an O-line coach to come in, instill the confidence again in these guys, teach them because you can – dude, these guys are not that dumb. O-linemen usually are the smarter guys on the team. Mm -hmm. They were constantly getting fooled on stunts. Like there's, there's no way you can get that fooled that many times on stunts. So you need the right O-line coach that can see all this kind of stuff and teach these guys – how to find all this stuff before it happens. And then, because that's really what it's all about. You know, Cam, I think in life, when, when you get beaten down and there is no confidence and there's nothing being instilled in you, it's only human nature to sometimes lose confidence in yourself. And I think that that's what's happened a lot to the established running backs that were here and the old linemen. Like Duke Johnson was fresh. He wasn't here for two years, taking a constant beating and running into lines with no holes. Right. That, that would then, you know, that would then emotionally just bring you down when you're constantly doing that. And I think that this offense ran into a lot of those issues for the linemen and the running backs, that there wasn't a lot of confidence in what was being taught and what was happening. And I think that's the part that needs to change. And when that changes, I think some of these men you will see play differently and play better because the confidence is there on the field and in the classroom. You're absolutely right, Big O, especially with that offensive line uh, coach. You know, I think that's probably the most important hire, whoever ends up at the OC, especially if it's Mike McDaniel. Um, that higher is, and especially he likes to run a lot of that RPO system, that zone scheme. I'm assuming that Kyle Shanahan, he's going to bring that over. So you need that offensive line to to excel, and you need to teach your offensive linemen. So, you know, I know there's some really good offensive line coaches out there. Mike Munchek uh, just became available. He'd be a guy that would be really interesting. Great to bring offensive in. line coach. So I, I think they should prioritize and spend a lot of money if they need to on that O line coach. That might even be more important than the than the offensive coordinator because you're going to have one of those guys most likely call and play. So O line coach more than anything is going to be the hire that I'm watching um, after the head coach hire. There you go. Follow him on Twitter at Cameron Wolf, and of course catch him twice a week here with the Fort Lauderdale Police Department, Miami Dolphins, and NFL Report. Cam, thank you as always, my brother. Appreciate you taking some time. We will catch up next week, my friend. Appreciate you, Big O. Y'all go. There you go. Be good.
There you go, Cameron Wolf, man. Good stuff, as always, with our Fort Lauderdale Police Department Miami Dolphins report. 